So the short answer to the question that I receive a lot is, hey, does intermittent fasting play a role in Ayurveda? I say, yes, absolutely it does. And how does it? Well, in Ayurveda, there's an ancient concept of Kshutnigraha, and Kshutnigraha has an aspect of shamana or palliative measures, palliative and supportive practices to get a person back to baseline, get a person back to health um, so they can go on with their day to day or so they get strong enough to where they could receive panchakarma, cleansing, uh, deep detox and rejuvenation program. But how Ayurveda applies intermittent fasting is not a cookie cutter approach. We are not saying that X amount of hours is the best amount of hours to abstain from food in order to achieve the benefits of fasting. That point could be argued by, uh, by some, but we are all individual. And so the way that we approach it can be look and, uh, it can look vastly different than the other. Uh, if we are applying intermittent fasting, we want to see, does it have the overall effect that I'm looking for? Does it have the overall effect of supporting my health or being detrimental to my health? And, and restricting food intake can be both, depending on how we're practicing it. So one practical way to intermittent fast is to do what I refer to as dinner to dinner fasting. So you have a dinner at sunset, and then the next day, you fast all day. You don't need anything that evening, the whole next day, until sun goes down. Once the sun goes down, you have a, a well-balanced, nourishing meal, not too big. And throughout the day, you have simply just liquids. Traditionally, in India, a practice of fasting could include taking whole milk if a person needs a little sustenance. Um, I knew a man years ago who was extremely physically active. He mountain biked, he telemark skied, he had a, a strong physical exercise practice, and he would intermittent fast on days where he would um, be exercising. And during those times, he said just a little bit of whole milk, a cup of whole milk would get him through the day. Uh, that may not work for everybody, uh, but that's just one idea of, of how you could work with it. I recommend just liquids. Um, warm or room temperature liquids, but not cold liquids. Herbal teas can be good, but if they're herbal teas that stimulate your digestive fire, like ginger, you want to think twice. Uh, water's the neutral substance. And if we are practicing this method, um, it takes some austerity if we've never done it before. If we're not good at fasting, if we do not, don't do well skipping a meal, this will lean into our hunger fairly quickly. An another practice could be just abstaining from food until noon or your lunch meal. Uh, eating dinner, not eating again all evening, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and you go all the way until your lunch time to have a meal. That works for those that aren't that hungry. Um, if somebody gets to 12 or 1 in the afternoon and then they overeat, again, it's maybe a little too much. You have to get used to it. So I encourage people to have a little bit of something, a piece of fruit or some soaked nuts like almonds, uh, just something light. When they get to maybe 10 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock in the morning, they just simply can't get to lunchtime. I say, just take a small snack. And then at that point, you can go to lunch. But practice leaning further and further into that hunger, feeling that hunger until you can get to lunchtime. You train yourself to do it. It doesn't have to be every day. It could be once a week that you do a practice like this. For people that have literally no appetite in the morning, they're just not hungry. Um, I don't encourage them to just have obligatory, an obligatory meal just because they're supposed to eat. Because no, we're not supposed to do any particular thing. Um, there's no hard and fast rules with this. But what, what I would say here is that if a person has very low appetite and they can easily get to lunch, it's a good practice to intermittent fast. But I always say, if you get to lunch and you overeat, you have to pay attention to that. It's a little bit of an austerity to not overeat once you get really hungry. And so you have to just kind of make it a habit and then you'll get better and better at it. Uh, so these are just two, a few simple ways, dinner-to-dinner dinner fasting, 
going as long as you can in the morning till you need a little snack and then get to lunch or going all the way until lunchtime. These are ways to do it. We don't have to put an amount of hours on it. We want to see how does it make me feel ultimately when we practice this method. For those have, that, have, that come to me and they have what I refer to or what Ayurveda refers to as mandagni. Mandagni is a slow fire. Agni is bright. It's always bright. But when Agni is, is weakened to some degree by our own internal processes, an increase of dosha, for instance, maybe kapha dosha, or maybe there's ama, metabolic waste buildup present that is suppressing Agni. So uh, Agni is there with the potential to burn bright always. But we have to remove, we have to remove the, ca the causative factors to that Agni being diminished in some way. And fasting is a perfect way to do this. We give just enough space, enough air there, enough space for that fire to exist and to grow. And then we can start to edge further into this practice of intermittent, intermittent fasting. Now, I have found some people think that, you know, the cure to all their problems is cleansing and fasting. And that's something that we have to be very particular with. Um, there may not be, there, may, there are times where I see that fasting would be really simply one of the worst things that someone could do or not beneficial in conditions where people are associating their, their uh, feeling of maybe low energy with the fact that they're toxic in some way. So in Ayurveda, we have very specific ways of ascertaining whether or not there is a buildup of ama in the body by looking at the tongue, by asking specific questions, by taking pulse, looking at various aspects clinically to see, is it a matter of ama or metabolic waste buildup in the system that's creating a problem? Or is it an underlying deficiency? There can be an underlying deficiency of blood or muscle or other tissues, other datus that can that could present symptoms that might make us feel, hey, I need to fast, but it may not be appropriate. So again, I hope this answers your question a little bit on intermittent fasting. Stay tuned to my channel for more frequently asked questions in Ayurveda.